All right, Ben Johnson. Reading the background of this guy, you don't want to bump into this guy in an alley. I mean, not that he was a thug or anything. It sounded like uh, the people that he supposedly did kill, that the other people were trying to kill him as well. So he doesn't look like some sort of thug. He looks like, well, he killed this other actor in a duel. He fought this other person in single combat and won. I probably don't want to mess with this guy. Um, you know, I, they say a big brawler guy. I mean, that doesn't really equate to what I think of when I think of the other writers of the era. Don't you think of them kind of being more introverted and alone by themselves, writing poetry about love and things, or, or maybe even Shakespeare, a frail guy, a frail actor? You just don't think of this big, hulking guy who could be so in tune with his, his emotions. Um, the piece we're going to be reading is called On My First Son, which focuses on his seven-year-old son who died from the plague. Um, and so it's a very emotional one in a very short, compact amount of lines, which that was one of his things. Uh, he was able to get so much emotion, boom, in concise, only a handful of lines. Um, he wrote, uh, uh, like we had John Dunn a little while ago, uh, where Don, Dunn really wasn't, um, you know, really focused on, uh, you know, uh, 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 being worried after death. Uh, he didn't, uh, he, you know, Dunn's works argues that death does not matter because it leads to eternal life. Being a very religious soul that we talked about, he doesn't fear death. Uh, he's fine. No, this is just my body. My soul will go on forever. And that's fine. Um, but this is a different type of writing in that, uh, you know, he focuses, Johnson really focuses on death and how it wounds people and grieves and, and really kind of like if anyone in here has had to deal with the loss of somebody, it, it's a really, it, it's a hard thing to, to stomach sometimes. Um, and it takes a while to get over it and some might argue you never get over it. Um, and so it's a stark contrast to, to Dunn who wasn't fearful of it and here it's, it, it really can hurt the people left behind. And uh, you know, watching stories on the news, there's usually nothing more tragic than when things happen to children. Okay, um, you know, school shootings are always really horrible things. You know, and there isn't a school shooting that's worse than other school shootings. But the one we had a couple years ago with uh, was it Sandy Hook? Is that some Sandy? I always want to say Shady. What I think of it, Sadie? Sandy. Sandy. Yeah. All right. Okay, Sandy Hook. Uh, you know, that was kindergarten first graders. That visual to me is a lot different than high school kids. Do you know what I mean? Even though it still is horrible and parents are still wrecked and families are decimated, maybe it was because my kids, my youngest was of that age that I couldn't imagine what that carnage would look like. It, it was it, rough, you know? Um, and so uh, I think Johnson is more on board with how, um, you know, a lot of people who have suffered loss might deal with it. And with Dunn, who's more talking about his own death and not worrying about it, I, I see them as two different things. Um, and I think that uh, you guys will agree in a little bit. Um, Johnson, a last bit before we get moving on. Other things, you know, we talk about he was a big time dramatist. Uh, some of his plays are still produced uh, nowadays. Um, it was interesting, it talked about uh, how he produced during his life a volume of his work and he titled it The Works of Benjamin Johnson which is a style of title used largely, largely with celebrated ancient authors. And so he was one of the first ones to put his work out there, like, yeah, look how good I am. Look, I, this should be on the shelf with everybody else as a complete volume of my work. Now, is that arrogant? Is that conceited? Uh, maybe he's just really confident in his stuff. You know, and since people are still reading this stuff now and performing it, Maybe he had a right to be. But he was one of the first ones to really kind of self-promote himself, I think is a good way of saying it. So if this guy was here present day, he would have been all over social media right off the bat, you know, saying, hey, check out my stuff, here's my link, follow me. He would have been all about promoting himself, I, I believe. Um, and still probably a, a cage fighter or something, which could have been really interesting. Um, especially if he showed up, his character, like WWE character could wearing the doublet and wearing the clothes. How weird would that be? Normally they're in their little underwears or whatever, but he walks out, you know, in a full regalia and just thumps somebody. <coughs> that would be pretty cool. We should write to Vince McMahon and tell him to do that. Uh, good, so uh, go ahead and go to On My First Son. Again, as I set up for you, his son, Seven, died. 
Um, you can almost envision this being read like he is standing above a grave uh, to some degree. Um, and we have what's called a, 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 an epigram here. Um, he uses an ancient Greek form called an epigram, which you'll see the rhythms kind of bounce. It's not structured. It's very short or long, um, so it isn't uh, structured like science. Um, it seems like he uses certain uh, parallel structures we've talked about where he repeats certain grammatical phrases. We talked about it back with Elizabeth, you know, of my kingdom, of my people, of my God, that type of thing. And so here we will see it again uh, when he references a few things. Um, but also a paradox where th things seem to contradict one another. And so within these, uh, what is it, 12 lines, so not even a sonnet length, see if you can find some of these uh, you know, grammatic structures um, that classifies this as that epigram. Um, good, so we are uh, on On My First Son by Ben Johnson. On My First Son by Ben Johnson. Farewell, thou child of my right hand and joy. My sin was too much hope of thee, loved boy. Seven years thou wert lent to me, and I thee pay, exacted by thy fate, on the just day. Oh, could I lose all father now? For why will man lament the state he should envy? To have so soon scaped worlds and flesh's rage, And, if no other misery, yet age? Rest in soft peace, and asked, Say, here doth lie Ben Jonson his best piece of poetry, For whose sake, henceforth, all his vows be such, As what he loves may never like too much. I like that line, line 10, uh, actually a little bit before it. Say, here doth lie Ben Jonson, his best piece of poetry. Is he referencing the poetry that he's writing right now? Does that poetry stand for something else, do you think? What? His son. His son. The best thing I ever did was, was my son. That was a, I create things. The best thing was my son, and here he lies. And so you can see the pain and anguish that he has. And even the last couple lines, look at the last few lines where he talks about, uh, for whose sake, henceforth, for my son's sake, all his vows be such as what he loves may never like too much. And we can see that uh, he ends by vowing never to like too much what he loves again. Because this pain is, is, is too great. Um, it's interesting if he talks about, uh, um, uh, have you guys seen gravestones with inspirational writing sometimes? If you've ever been down to Disney World and you're going to the Haunted Mansion, you're waiting in a line. How many of you have been to the Haunted Mansion? A few. There are all these gravestones and all of them have just silly little uh, epitaphs on them. Okay, where they, they talk about, oh, here lies Jane Doe, she ran so slow, you know, and they kind of rhyme it that uh, she was slower than her friend Flo, and that's why the bear got her. You know, somebody, they're all kind of comedy in nature. That's the thing with bears, you don't have to outrun the bear. Did you ever know that? You just have to be faster than the person you're with. Think about that, thought of the day. Um, and so here we have Ben Johnson, who is lamenting, obviously, the loss of, uh, loss of his son. Seven years old, thou wert lent to me. And so he's even kind of saying that, you know, maybe the kid wasn't even, uh, he didn't own him. It was just like the, the fates have lent it to him. The gods have, have lent him, and now he's gone. And now he's gone back. My time with him has ended. Um, he talks about how on line seven uh, that he has soon escaped the world and flesh's rage. So he's escaped all of the, the problems of this world, all of the scary things. And if this was going on during the plague, which he ultimately died from, you can imagine what that world would be like, um, and what a scary place, and this kid is now free of that. Um, the son's departure is, is eternal, it, it's not, he's not coming back, you know, that, that death is final, and that's why this is a nice one to teach after Dunn, where Dunn's was very much about not worrying about what's coming next, but here it's, we're focusing on the people that are left behind. And it struggles and it grieves. While the son, yes, has escaped everything, he 
he was still seven. He still had a whole life to go. And we are able to put the feelings that we have for maybe younger brothers, sisters, cousins at this age, and within the next decade or so, I'm sure you'll have kids of this age. And so you will able to, uh, to have a little bit more um, empathy for other people's loss. Um, you know, until you truly have kids and are responsible for someone, seeing those stories about children, bad things happening, oh, well, that stinks. But until you can project your kid's face onto them and their problems, you know, you haven't really experienced what, you know, fear of, you know, if you heard people go, uh, how's the kids? Well, as long as they're healthy, I don't care if it's boy or girl, as long as it's healthy. You heard that phrase before? That is so true. As long as you can have healthy kids. And then the next is you want them to be, you know, smart and able to take care of themselves. And those are always those wishes. And so to have a, a child here die young before even hitting puberty and maturity and being able to go on and do their own thing, you can see just the emotion pouring out of Johnson here. And he does it in 12 lines. Does it in 12 lines. You're able to see his feelings about the son and uh, how strong uh, they are. Um, good. Yeah. Under 14 lines, so it's not even that sonnet structure, not that it was following their rhyme scheme, but just 12 quick lines. If you notice, they do end in couplets. Did you notice that as we went through? We have been talking about sonnets, and then we just went to metaphysical where rhyme schemes don't matter. Well, here we jump back to back to the couplets that we've had you know, prior, all the way back to Canterbury Tales. Um, and uh, that, to, to him, that, that's some structure. He's not that rebellious metaphysical type poet that Dunn was of, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Here it's, I'm going to do what I want. I'm condensing it into 12, but I'm still having some sort of artistic, um, you know, poetic uh, structure to it. So I will write in couplets. My rhythm and meter will be off a, a bit, but I'm going to hit in even less lines than what you have, Sonnet people. I'm going to hit the main, the main thing. 